Hello everyone and welcome back guys to episode 5 of our F1 2020 Let's Make McLaren Great Again series where today we, yes we are finally, finally back with this championship. I know it's taken a bit of a while, I've obviously been sorting out a lot of the main career mode stuff at the moment but I'm aiming to try and get this series out once or twice a week obviously we've got this NASCAR Heat 5 and the Red Bull co-op career mode as well obviously with Jamie that we're trying to get on the side of the My Team career mode. So obviously just bear with me a little bit at the moment. But yeah, we're finally back though today, ready for the Dutch Grand Prix. I think we've got a couple more upgrades ready to go onto the car before we head into this weekend. As you can see, we've got the Pistons upgrade and some more weekly resources. So we might be able to get another upgrade on the car before we dive into this weekend's Grand Prix. We've still got uh, the rear wing outer strikes upgrade currently at the moment we might be able to get another upgrade though we'll go with uh did we go with the tire blankets no we'll, what we'll do is we'll go with the rear floor under trade distribution upgrade 1015 r d points there with a 20 percent chance of failure which should mean still at the moment there's a little bit of a gap to red bull and ferrari but we're, we're moving away from the rest of the midfield here we're sort of sat in our own little bubble at this early stage of the season there. But anyway, just continuing on, then we should now get the outer, uh, the rear wing upgrade on the car. Let's just double check that's all gone through. Yes, it has. Wonderful things you love to see. So yeah, we're pretty much as close to Red Bull as Racing Point are to us at the moment. But anyway, let's dive in then here for round five of the season at the Dutch Grand Prix. So here we are then, ready for one-shot qualifying around the Dutch Grand Prix circuit. Qualifying has been a bit ropey for us so far this season. We've struggled to get the laps hooked up right when it matters here. So hopefully today can be a little bit of a change to that. Obviously, Zanvoort, the corners come at you thick and fast, so it's going to be really, really critical to try and get that one lap hooked up. Hopefully, though, we can do it today, try and start at least on the fourth row. Once again here, but the lights are out and it's lights out and away we go. I'm sure sweat mode will probably need to be engaged on this run as we head through the first corner. Fairly nice and tidy, trying to watch for the wheel spin off the exits here because, yeah, really, really easy just to throw away a few tents with one just too much wheel spin there, as you can see. That is a prime example of a just a bit too much wheel spin and how much time it costs you around this track. Back down a couple of gears in towards my favourite corner on the circuit there. It's just insane feeling. The new rear wing upgrade working rather nicely as well this weekend. But hopefully we can just keep it nice and tidy at the moment. Making a few small mistakes here and there. This corner I don't really get on all too well with. For the AI, we're able to maximise it through there a whole lot better than we're able to at the moment. As down now into sector three. Feel a little bit stronger through the first part there. But we made a hash of the exits. We are going to lose a little bit of time. One more proper corner to go though. Use up all of the exit curb as much as possible. Now it's just the run to the line. Try and give yourself the shortest run. Use all the camber and down towards the line I think it's going to be P7 on the grid here at Zandvoort. So rather happy actually with that one in the end. I think that should be best of the rest unless Lando has been able to pull off a bit of a worldy. Let's just wait and see. Finished. No. It's time to remind ourselves yes. Of our top Even. Three. Verstappen. And Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. Well, that wraps up qualifying, but don't worry. We'll be back tomorrow as we head into the Grand Prix. So Lando did out-qualify us in the end by just under two-tenths of a second. But homeboy Max Verstappen having an absolute mare in that qualifying session starts down in P10. So we've got the weaker of the Red Bull drivers just in front of us ready for the start here. Bottas on pole ahead of Seb, Hamilton and Leclerc. So a bit of a mixed up grid, just a little bit. We're going to have Verstappen, who's looking to try and get absolutely everything out of the car, starting a little bit further back than he would have liked. But happy with qualifying? Let's dive into it then here for the Dutch Grand Prix. It was 35 years ago that the late great Nicky Lauda took his 25th and final Grand Prix win here at Zandvoort. He came from 10th on the grid to beat his McLaren teammate Alain Prost by just two tenths of a second. 
Well, Zandvoort is a very different circuit today, of course, but still one with an incredible legacy. And we're going to add to that. Welcome along to the 2020 Dutch Grand Prix. A lap of this short 2.6 mile Zandvoort circuit features 14 corners, 10 to the right and four to the left. The main straight is 678 meters long and heads into turn one, the Tarzan corner. With DRS down the main straight into the braking zone, that could be the best overtaking opportunity on the track. Joining us today to oversee all the thrills and spills, it's Anthony Davidson. And it's great to see you. How are you feeling about the race today? And how are the circuit conditions from what you've seen? Well, it's looking a bit cold out there, if I'm honest. These tyres have quite a narrow operating window in terms of the temperatures they need to extract the best grip. So with a cold track surface, it's going to be harder to keep those temperatures up, which will lead to lower grip and maybe more mistakes. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas. The Finn starts from pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Leclerc, Alexander Albon, and Norris, Mr. Monaco, Perez, Ricardo, and Max Verstappen, Stroll, Kvyat, Kevin Magnussen, and Raikkonen, Grosjean, Gasly, Esteban Ocon, and Antonio Giovinazzi, Russell, and Nicholas Latifi. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Now that we've got some points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. So here we are then, ready on the grid for the Dutch Grand Prix. Obviously, as always, strategy, pretty simple. A nice easy one stop. The team are recommending we pit about lap 8. Hopefully we can try and get the jump on our teammate Lando and obviously get the first call in terms of the strap. But yeah, today though is all about just trying to keep it clean, keep it tidy and just hope that others around us make a few mistakes as well. But I just want to dive right into it. I love this track. It's brilliant fun on F1 2020. So we're just going to dive right in. Starting P7 for the Dutch Grand Prix. It's five red lights and it is lights out and away we go. Actually off to a good little start for once. Able to get straight past Lando on the run down towards turn one. He is still going to keep the nose up the inside. Hopefully we can try and get the power a little bit earlier off the exit of the first corner there as we head down into turn two and turn three. We have held on. We have made the move work and we are up a spot off the start of this Grand Prix. So we're straight up into P6. Albon has moved past Charles Leclerc as well. They're obviously World Championship leader at the moment, Charles Leclerc. But as we head now down in to sector two for the first time obviously the tires are a little bit cold the brakes not up to temperature everything like that just got to keep it nice clean and tidy here but yeah it's been a good little start we're up to best of the rest i think to be honest one of the talking points this race will be what can verstappen do from a little bit further back i'm sure he's going to be trying to scrap with us at some point in this race here but down into sector three for the first time trying to keep up with Charles Leclerc at the moment Trying not to obviously over push the car too much, but settle down into a good pace rhythm here. We have survived the start of the Dutch Grand Prix. Now let's get our head down and focus and see if there's anything we can do. Oh, yellow flags out already. Someone's clearly having some issues on lap two of this Grand Prix. I think it's one of the Renaults. I'm going to guess it's Ricardo dropping to the wayside here in this Grand Prix. Could we get a very, very early safety car? in this race. He doesn't appear to be pulling over just yet in all honesty. There we go. Ricardo out of the Grand Prix and a VSC. Reduce speed immediately and keep a positive delta. Drop your speed. Our delta is too low and we risk a penalty. Slow your pace immediately. See, back in again. It has disrupted the flow of the race just a little bit. I'll be honest, but we have lost a tiny bit of time to Charles Leclerc in the process as well. However, we just got to, like I said, keep our nose down because really, that Ferrari does look a little bit vulnerable just in front of us. We've still got yellow flags out as Ricardo is, hasn't been moved off the circuit yet. Not too sure where the Renault is. There he is. Not really that far off the racing line, I'll be honest. I would have thought that should have probably been a safety car, being real. New fastest lap of the Grand Prix for ourselves. A little bit lucky. Uh, with the nature of the VSC, but yeah, we'll, we'll take it rather happily. Lando's getting very, very feisty, just trying to stick the nose in in a couple of places at the moment. We're just struggling to find some pace now after the VSC came in. He's actually going to have a look up the inside 
into the chicane. Obviously, we've got to be careful not to come together because there's still some good points potentially on the table this weekend. But yeah, I'm sure Lando's coming into this weekend on a bit of a high after the Chinese Grand Prix last time out. Obviously, if you missed out on that race, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking it out. But yeah, we just need to try and defend from our teammate for a little bit longer as we close in on the pit stop window. A little bit early into turn one on the brakes. But we keep on to it. And Charles Leclerc now has got past Albon, so maybe he'll fall back into our clutches just a little bit more. This is the problem I always find now with the Dutch Grand Prix circuit. There just aren't enough big braking zones to be able to get back any ERS at the moment. Obviously, we need to try and get some ERS upgrades on the car as well. But yeah, there's just never really any opportunities to charge back up a load of the battery at the moment, which I think the AI are able to do a little bit better than you physically can as a human driver. So yeah, Lando's still applying the pressure. We've got the two racing points just behind him as well. And the gap to Albon is staying fairly level, but we're not really taking anything out of him. Team confirming we are going to be diving into the pits at the end of this lap, hopefully. If we do, we won't get held up by some slower cars. We don't obviously want to get overcut by Lando as well here. The teammate battle, rather important at the moment. We're both still young, trying to prove ourselves in the world of Formula One. And obviously every point matters at the moment. Everything in the driver rivalry, all that good stuff as well. But yeah, we just need to keep, try and keep our head down as we take a bit too much grass through there. None of the Mercedes have dived into the pits. Are we going to see any of the top runners into the pits at the end of this lap? Yes, Charles Leclerc dives it in to the pit lane here. We are obviously going to do the same as well. Make sure we get it slowed down nice and tidily. A bit of a dangerous pit entry, I'll be honest. But we do get in to the box fairly well. Hopefully we won't get held by anyone. Come on, get in gear. 2.7. Not the best stop in the world. We are going to be out, I think, around one of the Williams of George Russell. So hopefully he won't hold us up all too much. We're going to actually, yeah, come out behind George Russell as we get a warning for crossing over the pit lane exit line. A very, very tight pit lane exit around this circuit. I always forget just how tricky it really is. But yeah, we're back out then in P18 of the Grand Prix. Let's see if we can try and get past George or hope that he dives it in at the end of this one. Hopefully now most of the field are diving in the end of this lap. We have just about closed up the gap to George Russell, so maybe this will work out quite nicely for us. We'll get some DRS off him, and he'll get out of the way of us. But through the final corner, Lando is into the pit lane. Look how slow the Williams is. If you're going into the pits, please stay on that side of the track, George. But purple final sector. We should be back out ahead of Lando. There he is, just coming through the pit lane exit. Yes, we are. So we have still held on to our track position. We've actually taken a bit of time out of Leclerc as well. Don't know where Albon is in this Grand Prix. He might have stayed out a little bit longer here. So there's the potential we could take some time out of Alex Albon if we keep our head down. End of lap 10. We might once again be able to get some DRS off another car waiting to pit. That's not helped us out though. Out of the final corner. Almost put it into the wall. We will still get the DRS though off Antonio Giovinazzi. And I think Albon... Might have just been able to get past Charles Leclerc through the pit stop window. So that is good going. No, not quite for the Red Bull driver. I think they're going to be side by side, though. Just about Charles Leclerc holds on in front of the Red Bull man. So we're still about two and a half back. We just need to keep our head down as Max Verstappen now is on the Delta. So we've got to be careful of him behind us. He's six seconds back with seven laps to go. Most drivers, I think, no chance. But this is Maxi Boy. One final car into the pit lane then. I think it's Lance Stroll into pit road. There he is. So we're going to be back up then into P6 of the Grand Prix. But yeah, six laps to go of this race. I can't help but feel that we probably are pretty similar to the pace of the Red Bulls around here. But Alba getting towed along by Charles Leclerc is just enough through like the DRS zones and things to give the Red Bull the upper hand at the moment. We just got to try and keep focused though. Verstappen's taken a second out of us that lap, so we have got to be careful. Five laps to go here from the Dutch Grand Prix. Verstappen is still taking a lot of time out of us, but he's obviously got to try and get round Lando before he can close up to ourselves. The gap to Albon hasn't opened up too much, but it's definitely still just getting a little bit bigger lap by lap. So we just need to be careful. Just keep it clean, keep it tidy, and bring home a solid eight points, I feel, at this stage of the day. Coming on then to the final lap of this Dutch Grand Prix as the track got a bit cloudy. 
The whole race seems to have neutralised just a little bit here, but one more lap to go around at this Zandvoort circuit. The gap to Lando's basically held level. The gap to Alex up in front has basically just opened up ever so slightly. Verstappen's pace seemed to slow towards the end as well. I think he's stuck now in Lando's dirty air. Unfortunately, as much as the Dutch Grand Prix circuit is a fun track to drive, can't really create much good racing. Sadly, in all honesty, there's just not really any places where you can go too wide and things like that. And obviously, with the dirty air now on F1 2020, it makes things even more difficult in that sense. But it's worked in our favour today. P6 is, I think, actually our worst result of the season, uh, in all honesty. But still, we've had a good fun race out of it. We've got really everything we could out of the car. The only real way we improve is either Albon struggles a bit more, and this track really does suit Red Bull. Or we see one of the Mercedes or Ferraris retire from the Grand Prix. Well, Bottas, though, is going to come through for the race victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix. Circuit seven new fastest lap right at the very end for the bonus point as well. But at the final corner, though, it's going to be P6 at the end of the day. They're best of the rest once again, and we will certainly take that. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. doubted whether they could pull off the win here in Zandvoort, but they have done, and done it in spectacular style. Tell me, Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. After an excellent performance at the Grand Prix, I'm sure there'll be plenty of celebrations tonight amongst the Mercedes team. And they certainly deserve it. Let's have a quick look at how the driver's standings have changed. Valtteri Bottas passes his rival to take over the lead of the driver's championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? Often my go-to would be a driver who's managed to pull off an especially impressive feat during the race. However, in this instance, I was more impressed by Max Verstappen's solid, clean driving throughout the event. Let's move on to the constructors. The current championship leaders still hold top spot, but that gap is getting smaller. There was also a strong showing from the Mercedes team today as they make their way up the standings. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. So there we are then, guys, the end of the Dutch Grand Prix. And it is Bottas taking home the dubs ahead of Lewis Hamilton there, who got the jump on Sebastian Vettel to make it a Mercedes 1-2 at the end of the day. Their seven third with fastest lap gives him 16 points ahead of Charles Leclerc in fourth. With Albon fifth, myself in sixth ahead of my teammate Lando Norris and Max Verstappen picking up driver of the day because he made up two places in that Grand Prix there. Bravo uh, to Max Verstappen. But Sergio Perez in ninth, Lance Stroll in tenth at the end of the day. A lot of people actually just moving around at one spot in that Grand Prix there. And you can see all the guys that obviously were able to capitalise from Daniel Ricciardo's retirement there. What's that? 11th through to 18th. 11th through to last, sorry. Uh, didn't actually gain any places apart from Ricciardo, obviously, with his retirement there. So everyone moved up one spot in that Grand Prix. Further compounding, just the overtaking issues that you get around this Dutch Grand Prix circuit. Championship-wise, though, we're still in fourth at the moment. Bottas now leads the way two ahead of Charles Leclerc at the top of the championship there, with Vettel just nine back now from top spot. Us 33 points back. We're just looking for consistency and if possible to beat the Red Bulls at the end of the season there. Lando in fifth still just behind us after that race victory last time out ahead of Max Verstappen and Alex Albon there. Hamilton finally starting to make some progress up into eighth place altogether there ahead of Daniel Ricciardo with Sergio Perez rounding out of the top 10 there. No other uh, su surprises or switcheroos further down the field but unfortunately for us McLaren 
have now been jumped by Mercedes for P2 in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari still with a 44-point lead on top there, so they've got to run a one race margin over the rest of the field there. But no other changes in the Constructors' Championship either when all is said and done. But a big, big thank you to those of you that have watched and enjoyed this video. Make sure you get yourself subscribed for more of our F1 2020 Let's Make McLaren Great Again series. And we will hopefully be back with a little less of a hiatus next time out for the Spanish Grand Prix. A big thank you to our channel members for making these videos possible. You can be featured in these end clips as well as granted access to some other exclusive perks for just £1 a month by clicking the join button below.